as part of the Cooking with Pickling Onions series, um, I'm about to embark on making some uh, another local uh, speciality, and really that's stretching it a bit because it's Eastern European uh, recipe called pierogi. Um, they're little potato dumplings, so they're a uh, filling of mashed potato, it could be cheese, sauerkraut, uh, even fruit uh, in a dough, and it's kind of like an Eastern European ravioli. Um, we absolutely adore them, and we fry them with onions and butter, and we serve them with bacon or uh, Ukrainian or Polish sausage, and lots and lots of sour cream and dill. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the dough right now. Um, because all of the fillings, and I've made three fillings, they will all uh, contain the onion tops from our pickling onions that we harvested um, yesterday. So let's get started. Uh, there will be the recipe in the description below, of course. Uh, you might think it's an awful lot of faff. Uh, it is, but believe me, pierogies are so worth it, and they freeze... Uh, like the raw dough uh, assembled into the pierogi freezes beautifully and they are so easy to just pop into a pot of boiling water um, when, when you want to have a few pierogies and some sour cream. So we're going to need um, four eggs uh, to go into one cup of milk. These are large free range eggs. And I have six cups of flour here with a teaspoon of salt in the bowl. I'm going to blend into the milk and eggs uh, three quarters of a cup of water as well. I'm just start that up. Be super blended. So it goes the water. Now this six cups of um, flour in here and and some salt, as I said, it, that's a lot of flour. I mean, it's a lot. This dough, I'm hoping, and it varies all the time. Really hoping that it will um, be enough that I only have to make two batches of this dough for my three fillings. I have something like uh, just over two kilograms of fillings uh, to go in. But we like to make a lot and we freeze them on the trays and then just bag them up. Um, we'll get to that later. So I take the handle of a wooden spoon, I make a well in the flour, add all of it. <clears throat> If it's too runny, I just add more flour. And if it's too dry, I just add more milk. That should be all right. And we use the uh, wet hand, dry hand method, um, so that if the phone rings or something, <laughs> you're not like completely gummed up. Okay, so we're getting to there. And I'll take my scraper, I'll scrape down the sides of the bowl, and start cutting in. Um, it's a stiff dough. Once this has been kneaded properly, and really, it just, it's not one of these, you know, you have to knead it for 10 minutes or whatever. You, you just don't. Um, it just needs to come together, and then you need to let it rest. At room temperature or in the fridge, it doesn't really matter. So you can see I'm just cutting in here. It's a really nice shaggy dough. Break the edges. Because eggs like to stick to the end of the dough or the bowl. Okay, that's not too bad. And just get in there, pull it all together. I think that's enough faffing about. I think we're going to have lots of dough. Maybe not for all the filling, but I can always make another batch. And the filling keeps pretty well, of course. All you have to do is uh, 
put it in a covered container and leave it, oops, in the fridge <clears throat> until you're ready to make more dough or make any dough. It also fries up well <laughs> in little cakes if you add some flour to the filling as well. But we'll get to that later. So there is your dough. It's a very stiff, shaggy dough. We're just gonna leave it to sit with a damp cloth over for an hour. So I've divided the mashed potato with the green onions, which is also known as champ, um, into three portions. In this one, I've got about 200 grams of feta cheese. And I have, when well, I will add this dill, it's about a good handful. I'll chop that fine. And this one here, I have some dry curd uh, cottage cheese, but I have added a little bit of cream. I'll just mix all that up. There's about 300 grams of cheese in there and just a dash of cream. And finally, we've got about 200 grams of grated Canadian cheddar cheese. It's uh, old, old cheddar. And, uh, and then we'll mix that in. Those will be the three fillings for our pierogies. Yeah, I mean, it's a, an economical way to do it. You just boil one pot and mash one pot of potatoes and then divide it and then add what flavors you want. Um, yeah, so I hope you like those. We'll get on with uh, filling these in just a minute. Okay, so um, now we're gonna to come to assemble our pierogies. Um, I've done a few already, and I have another tray already in the fridge. Um, just to recap, we've got the three fillings. I've used about a quarter of this dough, and it's already made about 30 pierogies. So we'll get about 120 out of here. I nearly finished the, uh, the feta and dill uh, mix, but that's okay, because uh, We've got two more things left, so there's plenty of work here to do yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off some of this dough. Here's about a quarter. I like to work with about an eighth of it, an eighth, I'm sorry, an eighth of it at a time. Just more manageable. Um, I, I cheat and I use a pasta roller. <laughs> I don't roll this stuff out. I'm, I can't, I can't be dealing with that. I, I've done it in the past, and the only the only thing you need to do is roll it thin enough to get into your pasta machine, okay? And uh, I use a KitchenAid um, with the pasta rolling attachment. That's about good enough. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll just do a bit of this, put lots of flour around, but very lightly spread, because when we come back, we'll have a long piece of this. So we'll take into the pantry to the pasta machine and uh, we'll roll this out to uh, number five. Okay, so I've got the KitchenAid all set up with the roller. Um, I start on the lowest setting. Um, anyone who's used a pasta roller will know that's what you do. So I'm going to turn it off. And then one increment at a time, I'm going to go to the number five setting. There are eight settings on this song. If I was making ravioli, I would take it right up to number eight. Or if I was making tagliatelle or anything like that. So this is a lot easier than the world. <laughs> it's just so much easier. So number four now. That's my final setting, number five. Sorry if I'm shouting I'm, this is a very noisy stand picture. Okay, so I think you can see now that's about where you want it to be. That's about 16th. Um, we'll take it into the, uh, the kitchen now and we'll get cutting this up. 
Okay, so um, they're all cut up now. Uh, there's always a little bit scraps left when you're cutting circles, of course. Hexagons are better than this sort of thing, but uh, we're making probies. So I just put it back in here, and at the very end, I will just roll up all the scraps together back over to the pasta machine, and I'll probably get another 20 pro reads out of that. So um, yeah, here we are. We're gonna fill our little circles here. Um, I just put it on the counter. I like a little bit of flour underneath. Um, on the top, it'll be kind of sticky. And then I've got two teaspoons here. And I just kind of do a quenelle here. Um, this really helps with the portion control. And this would be the size that I would want to fill this pierogi. It's not too much, it's not too little. So you just uh, take it like that. And that's the last one. There you go. The last one of the dill and feta. So I'll do the cheddar cheese ones next. And I'll show you a little better what I did there with the cheddar cheese ones. Pinching. There you've got your little classic pierogi shape right there. A lovely little dumpling all snuggled up in his little doughy quilt. So there you go. So, two spoons, just get the filling on one spoon, and take it out with the other, roll it off, press it back down. Now, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just throw some, throw a teaspoon on. This is just the way to get the portion correct. That's how much you want in the disc. And then they're all the same. And because you're using a pasta ruler, of course, all of your, um, sorry, we're jiggling you around there. All of your uh, feet or your dough is the same thickness as well. So you really shouldn't have much variable uh, between each, each one. And that means they cook better too. Again, like so. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Pinch. Sealing the edges. So now, I've only got another, uh, I think, um, what have I got now? Another 60 of these to do. Okay, I'll bring you back when they're all done. Okay, so we have, um, the pierogies are all made. The, most of them are in the freezer, except the ones that I'll be having for dinner. Um, I'll have these five. These are the cottage cheese and onion. Um, I've got my boiling salted water here, and I have some onions that about half an hour ago I started to caramelize. Um, obviously some big thick slabs of bacon or some um, kubasa, uh, Polish sausage, anything like that, farmer sausage, would be nice in there as well. So uh, we're just going to get these in, and um, you can cook these from frozen as well as fresh. Of course, you don't need to thaw them, uh, and you can cook them in the same manner. The, uh, you know they're ready, because just like ravioli or any other pasta dumpling, um, they will float uh, when they're done. Okay, so when they're fresh like this, they only take a couple of minutes. You're really just cooking the dough um, and heating the filling. These guys are floating now, so I'm just going to scoop them out and put them in with the, uh, the onions. I'll turn the heat up a little bit. Put the onions to the side. Um, I've cooked the onions in just a little bit of camelina oil. You can use a canola or olive oil, whatever you want, um, and butter, of course, and uh, just a little pinch of salt. So we get these guys browned up on both sides. Okay, so just a few minutes and we've got them all 
cooked on both sides just to give them a little brownie. Of course, um, when they come out of the water, you can just put them into a bowl and melt some butter over them and then some chopped dill. Uh, that's another nice way, or chives. Um, yeah, it's uh, lots of different ways. You can have these. I'm having mine with the caramelized onions. Let's put a little pile on here. And the final flourish, some sour cream and a sprig of dill. Well, I hope you enjoyed the onion series. Um, yeah, it just goes to show what can happen if you get a good crop of something. You can make all sorts of stuff. Pickled onions, um, green onion cakes in this case. And of course, uh, provies, three different ways, uh, with three different fillings. Um, just a couple of tips about making the pierogies. Um, yes, as I said at the beginning, it's, it's a bit of a faff, right? You have to make the dough, um, let it rest, you make your fillings, but they are lovely. Um, they're worth a try. It'd be even better if someone else could make them for you and you could taste them. Um, but my tips would be to set aside the time and do make the full recipe because, um, like I said, it is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. It probably took me about two and a half hours to, to fill all of these pierogies and get them onto trays and freezing. Um, use a pasta roller if you have one and if you haven't, maybe consider buying one because you can also make pasta with it apparently. Um, the other thing is um, when you're cutting your discs out, um, do keep the, the top of the little dough discs tacky and just try and keep the flour on the bottom. They'll stick together better that way. They'll be uh, much easier to handle. And uh, of course the quenelles. Um, those little shapes, um, you will find that the right size of teaspoon and the right size of shape and just make it the same every time. It's, uh, it's good for portion control. Um, it's the right shape to be forming your dough around and uh, it's, a, it's a good technique to learn anyway. And then finally, of course, um, before you start any of this process, uh, make sure you have enough freezer space for trays so that they can be set into your freezer on a reasonably level surface. Um, and uh, they don't need to be in there long. So if you can just reorganize your freezer just to accommodate a couple of trays, uh, you need to freeze them as soon as you um, fill up a tray just so the dough doesn't dry out on you. Well, bon appétit.